surviving evil. There are normal folks who struggle with sin and are trying to find their way. There are other folks who have given themselves over to evil. These are a separate breed, the very ones that hold incest close to them. Ephesians 4.19 says, Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to the sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. A continual lust for more. That's what lust does. It is never satisfied. It wants more and more and more. What used to satisfy them no longer does. And so they slip further and deeper into sexual sin. That is why there are perversions and fetishes. Isn't incest a perversion that then becomes a fetish? Maybe some believe that we shouldn't talk this way about our experiences. We should be satisfied to just no longer be living in it. To this I call bullshit. Don't you all get to tell your stories? We have the right to do the very same. I have lived most of my life believing that I needed to learn to bury my story. I could visit it for a second, hidden away by myself or with a counselor, making sure no one else could see, suffer silent, give it to God, and move on. This, however, simply does not work. By doing this, I continually tried to keep my incestuous family with me. What I learned is that I couldn't bring hell along. By keeping my family around, it kept me and much of my story hidden. When I decided to move away from the family I was born into, my inner world started releasing. It came alive in a way that it hadn't been before. It couldn't before because the inner world was still not safe. Abusers stay close for one reason and one reason only. To keep a veil of deni denial over you and your story. They're all cut from the same cloth. They all act the same, deliberately keeping their victims in bondage demanding the victim to keep quiet. Try to go to your family that hurt you and tell your story. What happens? It is slavery that incest demands. Your voice is what sets you free.